First of all, rest in peace to the amazing, uncomparable uh, Norm McDonald. But somebody said, when I feel bad and down, I watch Norm McDonald YouTube clips for hours and it makes me feel better. And dude, I did that yesterday. And I, shame on me for only knowing a handful of them. Every fucking thing that guy did, including when he said to Barbara Walters, Clinton killed a guy. It's the fucking greatest yeah. thing. And they go, no, no, you can't, you can't say that. And he goes, and she goes, Steph, you came here to be funny. And he goes, what? He goes, I thought it was public record. Dude, just the fucking best, dude. Just the best. And then the ESPYs. Uh -huh. Yeah, my favorite, the ESPYs is when he goes, and Charles, that's something they could never take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter. In that case, dude, Ken Griffey's face just goes, <laughs> <laughs> so do yourself a favor whether you knew all of norm's stuff lay in bed when you got nothing to do and go to his youtube clips because every fucking thing is gold and the last one i'll say was when he was sitting on the couch next to the blonde actress from i forgot her name from melrose place and she goes yeah i'm doing a movie with carrot top and uh and he was in the seat over and he goes, you know what they should call that? <laughs> they start laughing. He goes, box off is poison, right? And they, start, they just start laughing. And then, oh, did I lose you? No, uh, I froze up. Oh, you froze oh, up. Yeah. I saw that I saw that Conan episode live. I watched that. Like, I, I don't know, didn't have a spot oh. or something. And, and I and, watched it. I, I just was just in awe of it. Dude, and then Conan goes, so it's a working title, the movie with... Uh, carrot top and she goes no it's called chairman of the board and he looks at he looks at norm and he goes tried to do something with that you freak and then he just waits like two beats and goes yeah the board is spelled b-o-r-e-d and conan threw his fucking chair back the place went nuts and i was like dude the quickness and fucking yeah. brilliance of that guy so great man so great true you know why he's cool he ended up putting that actor in uh when he did his sitcom she ended up getting getting her a job because he probably felt bad because then the movie flopped because he had like a like like it wasn't gonna anyway you know what are you gonna do but dude as far as like people to go down a rabbit hole for me it's him norm mcdonald rick flair uh patrice there's like three of them you could just kind of go down and it's just so different and great and fresh and unique and i thought there was a lot of similarity in uh as far as what they did patrice and norm i thought there was a lot of similarity it's it's brutal dude that guy was just uh just one of them he's such a nice guy too he's such a nice guy and, and just i thought just so mentally beyond yeah all of us and that um I don't know. I kind of felt like he just sort of like that smile on his face was him just enjoying just the, you know, you, once you get past the depression of observing humanity, if you can somehow get into that lightened thing to just be like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll just sort of enjoy it. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, there's no way I get you. Know, the hardest thing yesterday was trying to put a tweet out about this. It's like, how the fuck do you sum up a guy of that talent in a tweet? Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I actually like, Yesterday, after I heard it, and I was sad. I never had the pleasure to meet the man, but I can tell you, uh, I got really happy watching his stuff. And time went by really fast. I just was watching clips, and then I'm showing my wife clips, and we're just laughing. And it was just like, I mean, beyond brilliant and beyond. And I, yeah, you could kind of see behind a smile that there's more going on there. But dude, his gambling was hilarious. His tweet, he would tweet out a fucking golf tournament. Everything that happened. Literally, he would go, Tiger's coming up on the second. He's got second shot. And then he would go, Tiger missed that second shot. He's coming up. And he would just, and you think it would be over. And he would just keep doing it. Um, just so fucking great, man. But, dude, when Barbara Walters, when he goes, I just want no homicide in the White House. Let's get rid of that. And they're going, like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And he goes, oh, Clinton killed a guy. Dude, it's <laughs> like, and, and, and they fucking freaked out, dude. Dude, Barbara Walters freaked out, and Joy Bayer was just looking, trying to smile. Yeah, because she knew she was worried about libel and slander. Like, you can't do that on TV. I don't want to be famous. I get a little bit anxious when you're looking at me. And isn't it obvious? You know I'm going to do shit. I'm stubborn as the calm. I'm stopping till I'm done. And I got it.
But he can do it because he's a comedian and Bill Clinton's a public figure. It's a weird you know kind of thing. Is. But she had never dealt with somebody like him. He said, oh, Clinton killed a guy like he was telling her for the first time, which was so great. And they just fucking freaked out. But uh, anyway, rest in peace to one of the greats. Watch his clips. And it's a uh, it's a big blow. You could feel it. You could. He's one of those you could feel. So, uh, um, yeah, no, that was, that was the, uh, yeah, that was, that was a, that was a big one. And I got to tell you, you need guys. I just don't know. Why can't somebody who's a fucking, I don't want to wish that on anybody, but one of these cancel culture people, just, you know, comedian that tries to take out other comedians Ugh. every five. I mean, what, I mean, the fact that there's fucking comics out there doing that to other comics, uh, talking about events where they weren't even there. I know. And they're literally getting this information as I'm getting it. And they just comment on it and try and help take this a person out when it's you weren't even there. Why would you comment one way or the other? Yeah, it's it's. And then you present yourself as like the hero and this champion and all of that fucking shit. Oh, and there's a couple of them. Oh, I swear to God, I swear to God, they're worse than the fucking people they're going after. And I'll leave it at that. All right. All right. OK, thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Give out some free tickets. Everybody shows up, huh? He's like, this guy fucking rocks, man. Free tickets. I like this guy. All right. Well, it's uh, it's good to be here, man. It's nice to be back in town here in New York. I didn't do shit today. I didn't. I'm a loser, man. I just sat around watching TV and all that type of stuff. And I'm going to tell you something, man. You know what? I'm sick of pedophiles. Yeah. Sex offenders. Dude, they're on every channel. Everybody is doing something on sex offenders. You know, it's like, dude, I got it. There's people out there touching kids, you know? But it's not everybody. It's a very small portion of the population. So, you know, take it down a few because you're making it fucking awkward out there. Dude, you can't say hi to kids anymore. I love kids. I love kids. I like making faces at them on the airplane, making them laugh. Now parents are like, is that a sex offender? They start huddling their kids in. Making me feel like a freak, you know? I'm terrified of kids now. Remember back in the day when a kid would come walking up to you, you, you could pat him on the head, hey, hey, Rusty, how you doing, right? Now a kid comes walking up, I'm like, dude, get that thing the fuck away from me. Get it away from me. I'm serious, dude, get it away from me. Hands are up high, not aroused, just terrified, please, for the love of God. Serious, get that thing away from me, all right? Don't need the FBI or have to catch a predator guy to come walking out, like, what are you doing here? Sit down. That show to catch a predator, man, that is horrible PR for white people, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can they move that show to an urban area every once in a while? Just catch a couple of R. Kelly's peeing on some kids, you know? Just balance it out a little bit. It's like, does every dude walking in that house got to look like me? Like, hey, you're the fucking egg you roll. How are you? No, but it's unbelievable. Everybody is talking about pedophiles and all that type of stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe there's more of them nowadays. Is it, is it like easier now? Because the internet, you know? You know, because back in the day you had to work for it, right? You know, you had to get an ice cream truck, you had to buy some budget you had to figure out when the kids got out of school, you pick a straggler, you know? Now you just go on the internet, you just Google www.eight-year-old whose parents are falling asleep, you know, you're in there. No, it's unreal. When's the last time you saw a kid riding a bicycle down the street? You're never going to see that shit again. You never see him playing outside. Your parents just have him inside now, man. They're just feeding him and feeding him, you know? Just making him fatter and fatter. I'm trying to make him unfuckable. That's what it is. That's why you see all these 4 to 50 pound 8 year olds just come, just come waddling out of the house. You can't get that kid in the car. I'm serious, pedophiles in general are very skinny people. They gotta start chalking up their forearms and fucking blowing out their back. <laughs> it's just a theory, people. Seriously. Honestly. 
Don't take this shit too seriously. <laughs> That's true, though. Life can pass you by. It happens. You know, you just keep living and living and living. You know what it is? You basically, you got, I think you got like 25, 30 years to absorb as much as you can. And then that's it. That's all you know. Because right around then, you get married and it's over. Right? You have a couple of kids. You're sucked in the bubble. You don't have time to pay attention to what's going on in the world. You're just stuck with these kids. Eh? It's shitting all over the place. Don't be a serial killer. Don't touch that. You're just stuck in that. You have three, four kids. That is a 25-year sentence trying to get them all through college. The society just keeps fucking going. You get the last one through college, you step back out of the bubble, just... <laughs> you don't know what happened. You're not even paying attention. You go back to your old record collection. Right? Someone sticks a mic in your face. You're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. It's one of the sad things about life. You get old and it passes you by. I feel it passing me by. I'm 46 years old. I don't even have kids, but I can't keep up anymore. Like I had a college kid coming up and I was like, man, I, I, gotta, I gotta figure out what these kids are into, man. I was, I was 24 when, when a senior was born. I gotta figure out what these, these dudes are into. So I guess they were into like, this like DJ music or some shit. So I'm like, all right, I'll watch some of this, you know? So I have like a, a reference or two. I don't want to be that old comic coming to the gig being like, what's up with this Monica Lewinsky? Is this, is this crazy? I mean, this, this Y2K, I mean, is my stylist going to work? I mean, eh. So I put this shit on. Dude, I lasted 90 seconds. 90 seconds. I was open-minded. All right, put it on. 90 seconds later, I'm like this old man. Ah, this isn't music. Well, when I was a kid, you dressed like a woman and you sung about the devil. Now, now that was music. And, and you had one ballad, every album. Started off in black and white, and when the guitar solo came in, it went to color. Ah, that was music. Yeah. All of this shit's passing me by. I'll get in trouble later on in my life. Transgender athletes, I don't fucking understand that, you know? I understand it if, you know, you want to switch around. I don't give a shit. But I'm a sports fan. That's a really new concept to me, that you can be a dude right? Ranked 80th in the fucking world. You have your dick cut off, you put on a sports bra, and now you're the number one tennis player in the world just coming out there with your man's shoulders. That doesn't seem fair. I might be wrong. I might just be an old guy. I have no idea. But I'm hearing rumors like some of them are getting into that MMA. You can't have that shit. Am I nuts? That is a dickless dude beating the shit out of a woman. Jesus Christ, he might as well hit her with his discarded dick like a flashlight. Just... Hold still. No, it's grounded. Her grounded pound is incredible. Yeah. I'm not saying these people are right, and I'm not saying that I'm right. I know I'm a fucking moron, you know? <laughs> but that Duck Dynasty guy, I know what he said was wrong, but I don't get the shock. He said that homophobic stuff, and people are like, can you, can you believe? Can you believe? It? Yeah, I totally can believe it. If I was in Vegas, I would have put 90% of my shit on that he was going to say it. I'd give him a 10% benefit of the doubt, just in case. Are you seriously shocked some redneck with a beard down to his dick, sitting in a boat in the middle of a swamp, shooting varmints? Like, what did you think he thought? Did you think he had, like, some progressive ideas? on same-sex marriage? Yeah. Didn't he think, didn't he think exactly what you thought? He thought, you know? You know what kills me too? That fucking kind of shit, that, that homophobic stuff, that all comes from the church, man. Doesn't that come from that shit? Well, they, they, there's, there's something in there. I never read the book, all right? I tried to. They need to fucking update it, all right? They update iTunes every fucking six days. Can we update the language and make it a little more user friendlieth for someone like me, right? <laughs> now, that's, that's where he gets all those fucking ideas. That Duck Dynasty guy, it's not his fault that he went to, uh, what, he went to Sunday school in like 1949, you know? <laughs> I think all of that shit comes from the church. They just fucking brainwash you, you know? You come, don't, don't clap, don't clap, I don't read. I don't read, follow someone else. I'm telling you, they brainwash you. 
come into the church, your brain's all empty, they just fill it up like a jelly donut. Just brainwash them. Say what we say when we say it. Say it again, then you can go home to your toys. All right, I'll say it. I'll say it again. Now can I go home to my toys? Right? And you repeat everything they say. The good, the bad, and the fucking horrific. They stick a star in your forehead. You're a big boy. You make people like me. You get on with your life. You go to college. You get a master's degree in English like this redneck dude had. He invents the new duck whistle or whatever the hell you call it. Right? Yours goes, what, what? Mine goes, what? A fucking what? Dude makes a zillion bucks. Gets his own TV show. He's loving life. And out of nowhere, here comes that same question 60 years later from Sunday school and he stands up like the Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Jesus likes hookers and lepers, doesn't like the queers. <laughs> and everybody freaks the fuck out. And he's like, oh, that's what they said. And they're all dead. Oh, where'd everybody go? I thought I was a good boy. <laughs> and you're just this scared old man getting yelled at in a boat. I don't understand. I don't understand why a group like GLAD, right? I always forget it's gay, lesbian, ad, whatever the fuck it stands for, all right? Why do they go after the old guy in the boat? Why don't they go after the people writing the book, all right? Go and go, hey, could you please tear it out of, you know, those couple of a pages, right? They're not gonna do that. That's the Vatican. They're their own city. They got a wall around their own city. They're, they're brushing off cases of pedophilia like it's nothing. They're not taking their call. Oh, what happened? Really? Go fuck yourself. Click. They don't care. No, I learned, I learned a long time ago. Like, I, I think it's whatever. Whatever you're into, you're into. But I don't know. I'm not into that religious stuff where... Uh, and this is why. I actually walked away from my religion. Just, I had to be honest with myself. Uh, next act up to the stage, I guess you would call him Kathy Griffin without tits, Billy Burr. <laughs> Thank you. Keep it going for Rich Boss, everybody. Come on, everybody. And for those of you who saw the last comic standing, how about a round of applause for the official end of his fucking career? Come on, everybody. <laughs> Rich, that was even the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe you said yes to that. Fucking Al LaBelle turned down that show. <laughs> Jesus, it's fucking unbelievable. He's been in this business 39 years. He's competing with open micers. You didn't even fucking stand up. You should have looked like Christ. You didn't look like Christ. You didn't even look like a comedian. You look like a fucking landscaper who's just trying the shit out on a whim. But you're dumb. You deserve it. Look at Rich. Rich spent three grand on a watch and eight dollars on his teeth. Look at him. He looks like fucking John Elway. The football player from 20 years. He's been out of the gym. Here's a decent line. Right? Maybe if you didn't spit on somebody every 20 seconds. You get a fucking deal, man. Look at that thing. That's not a bridge, it's a fucking dam. <laughs> All right, let's move on, because that's dying. All right, Vanessa Hollings, have you everybody? Uh, okay. Vanessa, I've seen you for like the last seven years. I got one question asked about your act. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no one cares about your stupid characters. Just talk about your dick and get off the stage. <laughs> Worst people. I'm starting off with a cute one. <laughs> uh, I just got back from the mic, uh, Mike Birbiglia's one-man show called "An Evening with Todd Barry." <laughs> Thank you, uh, Todd Barry. A little advice, maybe if you brought the energy up just a little bit, you could get a food spot at the cellar. <laughs> just wrote a book called How Dare You Work Another Club. <laughs> Keith Robinson wrote the foreword. I'm going to read some of it. No, Master, I won't be working no other club. <laughs> Bring it up, Bodie, Bob. Bring it up, Bodie. Coming up the stairs, Bob. Coming up the stairs. I'm fucking believable. Keith Robinson sold his soul for free nachos and buffalo wings. 
just fucking around. I tease the comedy cell. I love the comedy cell. You know what I love about the comedy cell? I love the wide variety of acts that they have on their weekends. On Saturday, we have four wonderful shows. At 7 o'clock, we have Tom Papa, Greg Gerardo, Nick DiPaolo, and Connie Quinn. At 9 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Connie Quinn, Greg Gerardo, and Tom Papa. And at 11 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Connie Gerardo, Louis Nick DiPaolo, and Alan Hayden. Question, who the fuck is Alan Havy? <laughs> Every six weeks I get that. I thought they give you more spots, but Alan Havy is in town. <laughs> oh shit, let's clear the fucking schedule. <laughs> Alan Havy is in town. Jesus Christ, by any chance that you bring Mark Cohen with him? All right, I worked with the Sklar Brothers recently. I got one question for the Sklar Brothers. Do they both have to be up there? <laughs> Is there any reason for both of them? Can't one of them just recite that awful material? <laughs> come up off, come up off, come up off. <laughs> awful. You got that, ugly. Then the answer to the question, what would happen if Jeff Ross fucked Mel Brooks? <laughs> All right, uh, Tom Papa, I don't know if he's here. Tom Papa has a new show coming out this fall. Evidently, it takes place inside of Jerry Seinfeld's ass. <laughs> Orny Adams lives in the prostate, and it's called, Who Are These People Love My Ass? <laughs> you guys all getting a fucking guest star on it, you fucking sellouts? Let me go from here. Nothing more bridges. Colin Quinn is still here. God bless him. Colin, come on, round of applause for the one side of the God bless him. Colin, I just have one question for you. Why are you still fucking here? You're at least twice as old as anybody here. No one cares about your take on the war in Iraq. And even if we did, we couldn't understand what the fuck you're saying. You fucking mushmouth hack. If you're gonna keep doing spots, at least take a fucking speech class. Tell me, you got your own show. Why are you still here? What do you think? Is that tough crowds like a stepping stone? You're 58 years old. This is it for you. It's not going any higher. Your brass ring was to get a time slot in a network that gives robots its own show. It's all right. It's all right. It's a joke. Uh, you know, just when I thought uh, Marlon and Sean Wayans were the, uh, were the worst related black comics I ever saw, Tony and Sharon showed up. <laughs> oh my god, they, they, they're, they're so fucking bad, I watched them, I, I wondered myself, is Keith Robinson teaching a comedy class? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, those guys think. Tony Rock is the Frank Stallone of comedy. <laughs> Sell his act to Tony, and Tony's gonna go on the road like Gallagher too. Except instead of smashing the watermelons, he's gonna eat them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, what's bring me to this type of shit? Trace O'Neill. What I've loved about him is he's fat and arrogant. It's the oddest combination I've ever seen in my life. Like he refuses to do comic view. He actually feels that he's above it. I will not do comic view. Patricia, whole act is perfect for that show. You do 11 minutes, you pretend to talk about Russia, and then you do 52 minutes of pussy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't do comic view? I mean, Patricia, you're so calm. You got a deal for your own TV show. You blew all your money on a pinky ring, a used Cadillac, and football jerseys. <laughs> and you won't do comic view, Patricia, you are comic view. Why didn't you at least get your fucking teeth fixed? Chris, you have the worst teeth in entertainment. None of them match. I worked in a dental office for five years. I've never seen anybody with a molar in the front. You have no business having a headshot. How would Feller call? He wants his old teeth back. Look at the space between his front teeth. He looks like a fat 50 cent. I'm just fucking with them. I do, I gotta do a disclaimer. I'm getting 
the most fucking grunt here. Yeah. Priest is fat. Priest has that awful fat person bad breath where you don't know if it's coming, the smell's coming from his mouth or one of the folds in his neck. Oh. Patrice's breath smells worse than Jim Norton's chest. Oh. I make fun of Priest. I make fun of Patrice only because I'm jealous of his career. Seriously, he's doing great. He just booked the lead in the, to the sequel to Mighty Joe Young. I gotta tell you though, becoming a dad though was the greatest, is the greatest thing that ever happened to me, man. It really is. I don't have any jokes about my kids. No, it is. And you're applauding my wife. She did all the work. Yeah. Yeah, knocking a woman up, that's easy. You just, you just have fun. You, unprotected sex, bam, you knock them up, and then they have to deal with it, you know? No matter how much they try to drag you into it, it really is, it's their show. You know? I always say my wife, my, when my wife was pregnant, I say my wife, you know, she's pregnant. And then I always have these people go, excuse me, you're supposed to say we're pregnant? You're supposed to say we're pregnant? It's like, well, I'm not a seahorse. So, I'm not fucking pregnant. My wife is pregnant. Look at her, she's putting on weight, her feet are swelling up. You know, she's miserable, fucking miserable. I'm still doing pull-ups. I'm crushing it while being pregnant. I'm still drinking, smoking, yeah. Every white person likes to lie to themselves that they were alive, you know, 150 years ago, that they would have been working on the Underground Railroad trying to help slaves escape, right? I would have been one of the good white people. That's, I would have taken time out of my day, risked my life. And the reality is, is you'd be doing back then exactly what you're doing today. Nothing. <laughs> Not a fucking thing. Maybe a little hashtag, Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, I, my heart breaks on my L-shaped couch. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing about the Black Lives Matter marches was the, the store windows that would have the plywood over the windows and then it would say Black Lives Matter on top of the plywood. I just love the duality of that message, you know? It's like, Black Lives Matter, we're all the same, we're all one. Don't burn down my store, you fucking animals! Everybody is welcome in this store. Anyone can come in one at a time, follow him! Like, how many times have you driven out to a bar going, I'm just going to have one, all of a sudden you had like 11, right? <laughs> and you're hammered, and you're thinking, but you know what, you're responsible. You're drunk, but you're responsible. You're like, God damn it, I drove my car here tonight. God damn it, I'm driving it home, all right? <laughs> I'm not going to burden this place of business by taking up a parking space in this completely empty parking lot for the next six hours. <laughs> I am not advocating drinking and driving, but I will tell you, there's nothing better than when all your friends and family know you're hammered. There's nothing better than that walk to the car. It's incredible. Women are screaming, people tearing at your clothes. You feel like you're in the Beatles. Oh my God, no! Stop it! You're like, no autographs! I'm sorry, I have to go! I'll be back! Get them off me! All my heroes are going down. Arnold Schwarzenegger, another great man. Another great man. Taken down by that gold digging whore of a maid he's got. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's not a piece of shit for doing what he did. It was a piece of shit move. But how come only he got chastised? What about the maid? Why was she called the maid the, that entire story? She was never called a whore, ever. Just boggled my mind. She knew his wife, first name basis, played with their kids, fucked her husband in their own goddamn bed. That's right down the checklist. First ballot Hall of Fame whore, right there. <laughs> Never. Why do you think she hooked up with them? Because of that 1987 flat top he's still rocking? The giant space between his teeth, I could put this mic cord through? What do you think, maybe it's all that kindergarten cop money laying around the goddamn bedroom. It was this kind of hilarious moment like last year where they started to try and cancel like dead people. Remember that? All of a sudden, I don't know where like John Wayne was trending. I'm like, what, they got some found footage? You got a new movie coming out that maybe they shelved? And all of a sudden it was all these stupid ass woke white people, right? Oh my God, did you see what John Wayne said in Playboy in 1971? This is a bunch of fucking white people all up in arms about a dead white guy. I can no longer tolerate this. I can no longer tolerate dead for 45 years, John Wayne, saying things.
things in a magazine that doesn't exist anymore. I am here for black people. You know what did amaze me during all of this was the amount of shit that doctors got from non-doctors slash complete fucking morons. People had to go to summer school. According to my internet research, if you take a little bleach, vitamin D and aspirin. Like my favorite heckle doctors got from people was like, dude, what's the last thing they even cured? What? Fucking polio? It's like, no, HPV. They just came out with the vaccine for HPV. No more warts on your dick. We should be carrying these people around on our shoulders. Thank you for not having to make me go down to the doctor and be like, that's not a birthmark, is it? Or even worse, you're too shy to go, so you try to do self-surgery with a frozen Bud Light can. Stick it on there! Freeze it off! Every relationship, there's the person that does the dishes and the person that lets them soak, right? They don't let them soak. They know you're gonna do them. They're just waiting you out. And after a while, you can't fucking take it anymore. They just sit there. You gotta go out and you start doing it. And then what do they do? They sit in the other room and they wait like they don't know what you're doing. And they wait till they hear pots and pans. And that's when the show starts. That's when they come running in like, what? Oh, I was gonna do those. What? Oh. And you're like, no, you weren't. They've been sitting here for eight hours. I got my hands in room temperature waters with scrambled eggs floating around. Don't gaslight like me. You're a fucking animal. You were raised by animals. Get out of my sight. Don't yell at me. It went from men not listening to women at all to just this total overcorrection that anything they fucking said means it happens, you know? They got these hashtags like, you know, believe women. Believe women, right? <laughs> it's a little open-ended, huh? It's just straight across the fucking board. All of them. Every last fucking one of them. What about the psychos? What about the ones that key your car and light your shit on fire because you didn't, you didn't fucking answer a text? What about them? How about you believe like 88% and that last 12% that's out of their fucking minds? You know, I think that's a fair percentage, wouldn't you? No? Are you too afraid to not believe? I know, that's, that's the world we're fucking living in right now. And then, you know, and then people are just like, did you see that story? You can't make something like that up. I always want to be like, well, did you see Star Wars? I mean, somebody made that up. They made like fucking 15 of them, you know? People can make shit up, right? You're part of the fucking problem. Get the fuck out of here. You know? Pro-choice always made sense to me because I don't like people telling me what to do. And I always just like, it's your body. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do with your body? So that always made sense, all right? However, I still think you're killing a baby. See? That's where it gets weird. It's not a baby yet. That's what they say, which may or may not be true. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I'll tell you, my gut tells me that doesn't make sense. It's not a baby yet. That would be like if I was making a cake and I poured some batter in a pan and I put it in the oven and then five minutes later you came by and you grabbed the pan, you threw it across the floor and I went, what the fuck? You just ruined my birthday cake. And then you were like, well, that wasn't a cake yet. It's like, well, it would have been. If you didn't do what you just did, there would have been a cake in 50 minutes. Something happened to that cake, you cake murdering son of a bitch, right? My girlfriend doesn't like it because she says I have a temper. She's like, you know, it's just not that you're trying to fix things. It's that you get frustrated, you punch the wall, the dog starts shaking. I just don't think it's a good idea. You know, you're a comedian. You should tell jokes. He's a plumber. He should plumb, right? I'm trying to explain to her that losing your shit is part of the process of fixing something. Everybody does that. You buy, right? Yeah. You buy something at Ikea. You get halfway through putting it together. You're like, dude, where the fuck is the fucking... Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Well, honey, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Why? Well, hey, you want to put it together? You want to? Well, then you put it together. You put together this fucking particle board piece of fucking shit. These instructions make no sense. I will buy another one. I will buy another one. I'll buy fucking five and smash four if I want to. You don't tell me what to do. Oh, go to your mother's. I don't give a shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah, what story are you going to tell? This one, right? Not the part about how I pay all the fucking bills, right? Donald, you're a lifelong Red Sox fan that you were disappointed, that you're a little disappointed that the, the Red Sox 
Like, you're not unhappy that they're that losing they suck. them. No, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're not. I mean, what are, who, who says burn that? Off, burn off all the bandwagon, okay? All those people with the pink Red Sox hats singing that stupid song in the seventh inning. You know, sweet, sweet, Car yeah. sweet Caroline, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Your girl's got her head on your shoulder like you're at a romantic comedy. It's, <laughs> it's just not what it, they got. A, they got like a mascot now. They got a mascot? They got a mascot. I didn't know they had a mascot. They tried a mascot in the late 70s, and the guy got pelted with so many, like, cigarette lighters <laughs> that he quit after, like, three games. And that's what I mean. Now I come back to Boston, everybody's, like, they, they like, holding a, you know, swaying, singing this song. It's just... Uh, it's the not the Patriots Red... have, like, a lighthouse at their stadium now. I just... Yeah. It's just not the, the city I left. <laughs> So you're bitter that they had that success. Were you happy that they won? The... No, no, I, I like that they won. I'd like them to continue winning, but I don't think we have to sing campfire songs in, like, the seventh inning. Okay. I don't like mascots. I don't like those songs. And Steve Jobs, I think, was a little overrated. I say, I say, you love it. You love it. You love going against the grains. Fantastic. Yeah, I like annoying people. Um... <laughs> Okay, on that subject then, have you watched the conventions, Republican convention, uh, Democratic convention? No. I think if you watch those, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you would sit there wasting your time. They all say the same thing. They're all like, you know, over the last four years, everything good that happened was because of us. And we would have done more good stuff if it wasn't for those guys. And then they, the Democrats go, oh, we did all the good stuff. <laughs> it's like you're all working for the same guy. They've been on both horses, and then it just kind of goes. You know, it's not for you, right? You vote for that guy that says, like, there's a meteor headed right towards the planet. That's the guy you vote for. <laughs> you go with the psycho, because there's no way there's any corporate money behind that guy, right? <laughs> like, that guy is going to come on TV... He's going to come on TV, like, reading files from the Pentagon. Like, you know what else they're doing? Like, just freaking people out. And as unsettling as that is, at least you, you, can, you can believe in it. You can, you can trust it. You know that, that no uh, corporations behind him, they're not getting any yeah. money on the side? Because I think both the Democrats and Republicans, they just say the same thing. They just say those applause break. I think it's time to get this country back to work. And everybody, ah! Some guy with, like, a Tennessee sign jumping up and down like he's part of it. Right? <laughs> you know, we're all gonna we're all gonna get <laughs> we're all gonna get replaced by like robots. That's what I think like eventually. You think we're all gonna be replaced by robots? Yeah. According to my, my YouTube and Wikipedia research, <laughs> I think that's the event. You know what it is, Conan? I, I don't have any kids. And if you go too long, you just it you just you get a little crazy, you know? You become you become like that black dude and that predator. Remember that guy? Like, I see it over there in them trees. <laughs> I'm like that guy. So you've sit, become sit, him because alone, you didn't have children. Like shaving your head, yeah. <laughs> no, you got to have something. I got to have a kid. That's what I got to do. I should just have a kid and play catch with them, you know, lie to them, tell them that, you know, Santa's coming and all that, right? No, I, I think it's too late. <laughs> I am saying what I'm feeling. You can, you can at least give me that, <laughs> That's right? good. You are saying what you're feeling. Uh, I want to make sure I mention this. Bill's new special, You People Are All The Same, will be available online October 1st at BillBurr.com. That's right. And I'm hoping people are going to uh, actually download it and, and pay for it. I am hoping. That's yeah. a, it's a big risk now. Yeah. That could become like a $140,000 business card. You know? <laughs> That's going to basically be like... And if you're gonna and if you're gonna steal it, can you just be honest and just say I stole it? Can you just do that? Don't be like we're not stealing it, we're sharing it, man. <laughs> no, you're stealing it. All right. I hate to tell you this, Lars was right. He was right. It's stealing. Okay. I did too. You know. Lars from Metallica. Yeah. Okay. No, the, the other Lars. I don't know. There might be another Lars. I'm just and trying like to be like a monster movie. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like the assistant name? Lars, turn the switch. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Burr. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Christ's sake. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm running out of ways to say thank you. For Christ's sake. How's it going? Excellent. I was in a shitty mood today, man. I was. I was watching TV. You ever been in like such a bad mood that even when you're watching bad shit happening to people, you're like, you know what? Good. <laughs> you know, I'm glad your life sucks. <laughs> Makes me feel better about my own. No, you know what I was doing? I was watching this, uh, you know those fabulous lives? I was watching the, uh, the fabulous life of the uh, Olsen twins, you know? And they're like 18 years old. They're like zillionaires. They got a great apartment. And it's making me feel like a loser. Then halfway through it, I find out one of them's anorexic. I was like, you know what? All right. That makes me feel better. You know, I'm glad she's not eating. Hope you pass out, whack your head off your golden sink. Just to add to my day. You know, I don't get, I don't get how the other Olsen twin only weighs half a pound more, but she's fucking fine. No, they're so starving, they're weak. That's why whenever they take a picture of them, you ever notice they gotta like fucking lean them up against each other? <laughs> so like they don't tip over like... They're like still trying to look sexy. They're not sexy, they look like aliens. They are, man, you can't weigh 42 pounds and have your eyeballs be 28 of that weight and not look like you're from outer space. Like, when I look at them, I think if E.T. was going to have a threesome, those are the two bitches he'd hook up with. <laughs> he would. He'd get that glowing finger going. Now, I'm feeling like a loser, man. I am, man. I'm fucking 36. I'm not married, you know? I'm at that age where everybody I know is getting married. You know, let me ask you a question. Why the hell do people keep getting married? You know, isn't anybody looking at the stats? I mean, what's it like, one out of two marriages goes right down the shitter? People, if you were going skydiving and they told you half the parachutes weren't going to open, you'd be like, yo, fuck that, I'm not going. Yeah. No, it's like, I don't like those odds. I get a 50% chance of splatting on the ground, I'm not doing it, right? But there's something about getting married. People just have to do it. They're just like, is this the line to lose half my shit? Awesome. This is going to be great. I can't wait to lose my car, my money. Oh, look, the line's moving. One step closer to my own personal hell. <laughs> no, I don't think I could ever get married, man. Married dudes freak me out. Anytime you ask a married guy, what's it like being married? They always tell you it's good, but they always have a look on their face like they have like an appendicitis. You ever notice that? You're like, dude, what's it like being married? They're like, you know, it's good, it's good. It's, uh, no, no, it's good. It's enjoyable, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, I think when you meet that special someone, there's a connection and I, I can't feel my legs. Let me just, just lean over here. You know, a woman completes a man and some other metaphor. No, you know what freaks me out too, really? When you go to a man's house, there's nothing in there. A married guy's house. When you walk in there, there's nothing in there that even suggests a man even lives there. It's all potpourri and throw pillows. That stupid canopy. We live in a dollhouse bullshit over the bed. Where does all the guy's stuff go? They just throw it out. They just walk into your apartment. Oh my God, look at all your stuff. All your stuff is stupid. Look at all this stupid stuff. Wow, guys buy really stupid stuff. Hey, you want to go to the candle store? Let's go to the candle store. Wouldn't that be awesome? You've been dragged into that nightmare for like an hour and a half, 90 minutes just sitting there. This one smells like a pumpkin. Doesn't that smell like a pumpkin? This looks like a Christmas tree. Wouldn't that be great? Smell like Christmas in the apartment? Middle of the summer, just fuck with your whole reality? 
No, you know what it is? I didn't have like a really good model necessarily, like growing up. Like watching my parents, they always used to argue and shit, you know? Like I was afraid of my dad when I was growing up, you know? Anybody have a dad like that? You're just afraid of him? You know, not like those sitcom dads. They come home, the kids are like hugging their legs. My dad pulls in the driveway. Me and my brother's freaked like, fucking dad's home. <laughs> Shut off the TV. Try to hide. Dude, if I stand like this, do I look like a lamp? He won't see me, right? Can I just fucking chill out here? He wasn't understanding. When you fucked up, he told you. He didn't sit down, well, we're gonna work it out. We'll just, you know, I still love you. He looked, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're an idiot. Weren't you even paying attention? No, oh, bullshit. Christ, you're just like your mother. You're fucking out to lunch. <laughs> that was my dad. No matter what he was bitching about, somehow he would make it about my mother. Would have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with her. He could somehow find a connection and spin it back. He'd have said, oh, is it raining out? Oh, for Christ's sake, I don't need this shit. Christ, it's the same goddamn thing with your mother. That woman is a fucking cloud hanging over my life. Anytime you got an idea, Christ, she shits all over it. No, he was hilarious. He used to work all the time, so he didn't really have, like, any friends or anything. So he used to talk to me when I was eight years old like I was a fucking bartender. Just dumping all his shit on me. Like playing in the sandbox, he'd be coming up there. I tell you, I don't know what the fuck I ever got married for. I'll tell you, man, I'm, I'm gonna get the fuck out. I swear to God, one of these days when I get in the car, I'm gonna fucking drive out of here. Your mother's a bitch, Billy. Do you realize that? The woman is a fucking bitch. Is that too real for you guys? You fucking know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I will get married, you know. I was making that. I'll definitely get married someday, you know. I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. <laughs> no, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your T-shirts? <laughs> this is the worst one. Let me get this one. You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside, you're like, fucking no! <laughs> but you can't say that, right? You gotta keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Now we can sit around to listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? It's horrendous. I'm trying to learn to pick my battles when I date girls. I usually argue with women all the time, man. I'm stupid like that, you know? Like, I dated this girl one time. She was, like, really into, like, women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. Like, one time she came up to me. She goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get the dollar more an hour. Well, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. I got to stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I got to like get in the way of it to give you a head start. Like rabbit dog, run honey. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I got to go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. 
Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? <laughs> Bullets hurt me too. Why the fuck do I gotta stay in the vault? <laughs> no, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's shoving his dick down a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. No, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. And leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. You know, but I'm not, I'm not a dick, though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a doll less than an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're going to make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listen to that guy play the cello. <laughs> then you get to corner office. You get all the benefits or whatever. So anyways, I was watching uh, George Bush today, man. That guy scares the shit out of me. No, not because, like, all, you know, all that political stuff. He's just, like, tuning to Jesus for me. I get uncomfortable with that. When people get, like, overly religious, it kind of freaks me out, you know? You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't mind. I don't mind when, like, black people get really into Jesus, though, you know? Because, like, somehow, like, the shit stays spiritual. You know, you get a couple of good songs out of it. You know what I mean? People look like they're having a good time. Somehow, when, like, white dudes get tuned to Jesus, all of a sudden, like, shit catches on fire. People start dying, somebody says they're Jesus, and they try to fuck every chick in the compound. <laughs> then the FBI's got the place surrounded, that tank comes in shooting the flames out the front. And I'm not saying white dudes are any more crazier than black dudes, it's just that nobody's watching us. <laughs> That's the problem. That's too much freedom. It's kind of like living alone, you know, that same kind of fucked up freedom. You ever feel when you live alone, you like slowly go crazy? <laughs> you know, because you got too much freedom because everybody does crazy shit. But when you live alone and start doing something crazy, there's nobody there to be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? What is that? Put it down. <laughs> My girl's actually, she's really like religious. She goes to church every week and I never go and it freaks her out. She's like, why don't you go to church? You don't believe in God and heaven and hell and all that stuff? Why, why don't you go? And it's not because I don't believe in a higher power. I definitely do. My thing is when I go to church, I can't get past the fact that I'm just listening to some fucking guy. You ever think of that shit when you go in there? That's just some dude. And people are like, no, that's a special guy. No, it isn't. It isn't. He didn't, he didn't like levitate down from the ceiling like, ah, this white light around him. Why would you listen to another human being tell you where you're going to go when you die? It's just like, dude, have you ever been dead? No. Great. So wouldn't it be safe to assume that you wouldn't have the slightest fucking idea what you're talking about? Yeah, you're making it up. You're making the shit up. You're not fooling me with the robes and the candles. Speaking in old English. He said it under you wish. Shut the fuck up. You don't talk like that. You're just some guy. Your name's Jerry. You played soccer. You got your ass kicked in gym class. And now you're doing this. Just acting like you're special. I can't do it. I just, I can't get past that fact. I'm sitting in church. This guy's name's fucking Cliff. He's fucking bored and just break the guy down and then I can't listen. It's like, you go in there, you listen to another human being tell you what to eat and when to eat it. Don't eat meat this Friday. If you eat meat this Friday, you are going to hell. It's like, dude, I'm going to a cookout on Friday. If you eat that fucking cheeseburger, buddy, that is it for you. Who is this guy? Dude, I'll eat a cheeseburger whenever I want to and I'll jerk off, it's my dick. Why am I listening to this guy? I'll fucking jerk off while I eat a cheeseburger. What do you think about that? I'm 
not hurting anybody. Why would God care? I'm not hurting anybody. Think about it. You eat a cheeseburger that's protein. That's good for your muscles, right? And I don't know about you guys, but after I rub one out, I'm more relaxed. I'm less likely to lash out at my fellow man. I'm in a great space mentally. I don't have any road rage. I talk to telemarketers. I'm buying the shit. I think they just, they just make it all up. But it's weird, though, because I'm kind of feeling this thing because I haven't been in church in a while. I'm kind of feeling like, you know, I want to go back, but I need a new religion, man. That's why I'm kind of between religions right now. You know, like I used to be Catholic, but, you know, I can't be Catholic anymore, you know? I mean, once they started fucking the kids, I was just like, all right, dude, you know what? I'm out, okay? You guys party way too fucking hard for me, okay? I got off at about 22 exits ago. I didn't see that page in the book. I don't know what you guys are doing. I can't believe they're still in business. People are still showing up. <laughs> Name one other business that could survive that shit. You think if they were fucking kids at Walmart, they could sell rakes the next day? And just try to play it off like, yeah, we had a little problem in aisle eight, but you know, we got some slacks over here. We got kitchen appliances. We got some hula hoops. You guys saw the Pope die? You saw that, right? Yeah. Everyone was flipping out, man. I thought that was a good thing. I was like happy for him, man. He was in horrible health. You know what I mean? Everybody just wanted the guy to keep hanging on. It's ridiculous. They're like wheeling him from room to room and, and people are still flipping. Oh my God, I think he's going to die. I think he's going to die. I'm so... It's like, well, I think he's going to go to heaven. I mean, it's got to be better than that shit. I bet the last two months of his life, he was just sitting in that chair going, God, I wish the world would stop praying for me. Just fucking let me go. Good Lord. I skied till I was 78. I had a great life. Move on. So they got a new pope now. They picked another old white dude, you know. And uh, they were actually in the running was this black dude from uh, Nigeria, right? They were actually considering making him the pope. And I was kind of hoping he was going to win, you know. Not because I give a fuck either way. I just want to see all the black comics doing bits like the next day. Like, oh, white people scared now. <laughs> white people is scared now. Yeah, the Pope is black and shit. It's going to be a whole different story. He's going to come in with the hat to the side. Music's going to be pumping. White people in the front row. Gee, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Because when black people go to church, could you just feel it? That was like a half hour material that went out the fucking window the second they picked another white dude. It was endless. Pope Mobile's gonna be pimped out and you better not be shooting at this Pope. The black Pope will be shooting back at your ass. Cause when white people get shot, etc., etc. <laughs> Actually, I had this black dude moved in my building, man. Lives on the same floor as me. He's one of these dudes. Every time, he's, he's hilarious. Every time he says some shit, right after he's done saying the shit, he repeats, like, the most important part of, like, the previous sentence. It's hilarious. Everything he said will be like, yo, my man came in. He put that shit on the table. Put it on the table! <laughs> it's hilarious. Everything he says. Yo, this country's at war, son. War! I'm just looking at my friend like, dude, did you hear him the first time? Because I, I heard him the first time. I was smiling, I was nodding. Am I, am I fucking supposed to do that? I mean, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. 
It's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you got to like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Because God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10-day period. One of them's going to notice. All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. And then the whole car's like, oh, shit. Then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. He got five shirts. And they start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday, next shirt be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what, that's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. No, I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was like those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, look, he's got a nice car, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out in my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. <laughs> Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. You feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit. Like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no man, you wanna get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you wanna get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm gonna be surrounded on all four sides, I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during a slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But 
I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> Felt like I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I got to walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know, but I'm also really, really white, you know? Like, shockingly Caucasian. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. No, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have, like, a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me, top of the morning to you, like it. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> pretend, <laughs> pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and two, the radio's off, like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. All right, man. Take care. Thank you.